Juice, 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 juice. Well, there we go. Oh, it's gonna be a good old time. Well, y'all, we are going on an extreme kayak fishing mission tonight. We got the new old town in the back. Torrance is meeting us, but this spot is very tricky to get into. We're having a little bit of trouble with the directions. Thanks, Google Maps. Anyways, it is gonna be a stellar one, man. We're talking about fishing in like 112 degree heat. The temperature on the truck says 102, and the feels like temp is 112, I saw earlier. I mean, it's up there, boys. And this place that we're fishing is like a rock quarry. It's deep. I've caught numbers out of this place before. You've seen me fish this with John B. The place is absolutely fantastic looking, and it looks like it's grassed up and frogalicious at this very moment, so we might be able to find some bigs hitting some top water midday during this insane heat. We're gonna see what happens. I'm just looking out for Torrance. Right, he just sent me his location. Oh, he says nine minutes. <laughs> what? He said found it nine minutes away. Mother f It's the biggest annoyance, man. You know how like when you share a location, like you pull up the direct address, you pin it, you hit copy, and you send that address, and it ends up taking the person like nine minutes down the street. I even cross-checked it. I make sure to do this. I like copy the address, I send it to the friend to tell them where the spot is, and then I click the address that I texted them just to make sure it pulled up in the right spot. It looked like it did, and somehow he's nine minutes away, man. I am not a fan of the whole texting addresses, but when we get in here, it is gonna be worth it. I can promise you that. The man has arrived. What'd you think about this? Woo! A little sketchy. Put the beat down to the test. <laughs> we are here and we drop in. We need to be over there. I told him what he was in for. I said, hey, I don't know. He said the V-dub can hang. I said, all right. I think we might need to think this one through. It's a little deeper than I remember. I wouldn't go through that. Folks are in a bit of a pickle. That was definitely a little bit muckier than last time. I do have an idea though. <sighs> Check this out. Oh, that's bona fide, baby. Torrance is rocking the two-wheel drive, and I want to make sure he gets through this. He said he thinks he's got some rope though, so I mean, I could probably pull him out of a sticky situation, but maybe just avoid the sticky situation at first. Look, there's the tow hitch. We're gonna have to get him out of here. Well, boys. Where'd you say that rope was? <laughs> oh. Front wheel drive. So if you were to back up, you could. Can you get out of it or no? There she goes. She's wanting to go. Juice, 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 juice! <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you're... Oh, yeah, that comes off. Well, that did not work out so hot. We thought there was a little bit more clearance. We are gonna have to figure this thing out, man. Give us one second. <laughs> if you can't see, we are sweating like crazy. But we got all Torrance's gear in the truck, so... Job well done. I think I'm gonna grab this stuff, though. That might not fly. Let's get out of here. I guarantee there's no way I could have made up this hill. You made it though. <laughs> I don't know, man. Far left. Far left. Look. I have driven this place. <laughs> I have gone all the way around looking for alternatives. No. I have to go up. You ready? Oklahoma. Oh, bro, what? You, you ready? No. You ready? Bro, it's not gonna I know, no. <laughs> I was saying, I didn't sign the waiver. <laughs> Kayaks are still in the back, y'all. It's getting intense. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, jeez. We'll get you in the water, because I've been here, and you can just tell me what they're hitting. <laughs> I'll be in there in an hour. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> Man, we are here on the water. Torrance just launched. I've got a frog tied on, a deep diving crankbait, a swim jig, and a Texas rig, y'all. We got it all ready over here. Put the pedal drive system in place. Put my GoPro batteries in the dry storage. I'll just put him in there too. Wow, this clarity is next level. I mean, extremely clear. 
point said he missed one on the frog already. That's nuts. All right, this guy's diving a little deep. Feeling pretty confident in the swim jig with all this grass. That is why they call it the grass hero. All right, guys, I'm choosing to just circle the perimeter, trying to avoid the grass and the pedal drive system since this place is caked up like never before. Popping the frog, oh yeah. Oh wow, I just had one hit it as soon as it hit the water. Maybe I can follow that up with the grass hero. Now that I have pinpointed a Fisher 2's location. Well, it's now 725 and we see the bass blowing up all around us, but uh, they're not hitting the frog, which I would assume would be number one. Craziness. Oh, we've been in the water for 45 minutes now and I don't think me or Torrance has gotten a bite. They are not having it tonight. There we go. Mondo worm, baby. Just switched up to the Mondo worm. All right, y'all. First one comes a little while in. Oh, and check this out. I meant to mention this the last time I was out. You can, uh, cause on these 10 foot kayaks, sometimes you're wondering like what to do with your rod while you're getting a fish off the hook. You can leave your rod right here in this forward facing rod holder while you deal with uh, unhooking fish and also switching baits and things of that nature. So let's try and get him unhooked. He is not happy, I'll tell you that much. You on? Doubled up, man. That's how we start the night on catches. Okay. They're in these reeds that are just a little bit deeper. Got it. That's what I'm talking about, man. We might have them pattern. Were you, were you throwing a chatterbait? I was wondering about a jerk bait. All right, all right. So Mondo Worm and a fluke, man. To start the night, green pumpkin Mondo Worm. That's how we do it. Yes. So let's get him back in the water. We will see you, bud. Thank you so much. We were getting worried out here. Till next time. See, the thing is, whenever you go to put your rod down on this kayak, like the pedal systems here in front of you. So, oh my, top water. Huh. The system's right in front of you. So, I mean, you could do something like this, but you're trying to get that fish off there or maybe retie a bait. So you just pop it in that rod holder and now your hand's free, good to go. So I can re-rig this worm, get back in the water. That is uh, something that was actually brought to my attention by one of you guys in the comment section. So I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Little tips like that, man. All that feedback really helps keep me going. I do appreciate you guys when you chime in in the comments and help us out. Let's get this worm back in here. A watermelon red flake, I almost want to throw that more, but hey, they're hitting green pumpkin. I never throw it, so might as well burn through a couple of them if we're gonna be catching. Rarely do I fish water so clear that I'll just go straight for a green pumpkin instead of like watermelon red flake. I just feel like that little extra pop, I don't know. It's all about your confidence, you know what I'm saying? It's funny, because some people I've ran into just say they've never thrown watermelon red flake and they only throw green pumpkin and they wouldn't have it any other way. So it's all just personal preference. By the way, this worm will still work and I'm still gonna use it. But right now, as light is fading, I'm gonna put on a fresh one just so I got that good confidence in that spiraling tail on the way down. Make sure I don't drift off into the grass. This is another benefit of the pedal drive, man. This PDL system is so dope. You can be rigging and staying in your spot at the same time. No anchor needed. Like there's plenty of times when you'd rather anchor than be doing what I'm doing, like to try and stay in one spot. But when you're just on the move, it is a fantastic little setup. Bluegill playing games! <laughs> my tip is like playing do 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 Some bullshit. Where's my crappie rig? Oh, there he is. Come on, no worm, got him again. All right, there we go. Come on in, buddy. Boom. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Get up in here, boy. Ain't no more bluegill today. Green pumpkin slaying. All right, now I think we're on to them, boys. That's two in under 10 minutes now. Every fish I'm getting, all these bites I'm getting so far that have been bass is right along the edge of some reeds or some grass on the surface. I'm trying to cast as close to the grass as possible. That's where these bass are gonna be ambushing prey coming out of the grass into the deep water. So that is my tactic here. I am retrieving it the whole way back to the boat though. So I'm definitely hitting plenty of open water plenty of deep water. There's a lot of grass I'm sifting through, but I'm trying to cast towards the uh, grass that's hitting the surface out here. So I do have an objective when I'm making each cast. Yeah, I might get one out here though. Starting to fish a little faster. I need to slow it down. Oh, 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 come on. That's number three. There we go. Mondo worm, bring it home. What do we got here? Is he swimming towards us or is he big? Oh yeah, he's huge. He's huge. Oh my lord, that's one for the wall right there. We're gonna have to get you mounted. 
see it, but one thing I figure I'll mention to you guys right now is I'm using straight braid, moss green uh, straight braid. So a lot of people will, they'll ask you, you know, they'll act all scientific and they'll say stuff like, well, what pound line were you using? Well, no wonder the fish weren't biting because they could see the line if you're using like 20 pound or 15 pound fluorocarbon versus like eight or 10. And in certain areas, it does make a big difference. And with certain species, it does make a big difference. But I don't want you to base your confidence off of what line you're using because it's so common. You get into bass fishing, you got this, that, or the other line. And then people are telling you, you can only use this in certain conditions. And that's just almost always not true. So uh, yeah, I used like bright, colorful braid almost the first, I think it was the first year and a half of me fishing. And like, uh, the reason I did that is because I heard somebody say that 30 pound braid, that's what I use, is like a really good all purpose braid. And so I just took that as like a good all purpose everything. And literally that was how I started. And I caught so many fish on like lime green, yellow, blue, just whack colors, right? Straight braid, no leader knot, no leader line. So anyways, and uh, a lot of the reason I did that too is because I wanted my reels to look cool for Instagram because I was just, you know, I just wanted the photos to stand out really. So anyways, that's my take on line. I just talk about that every so often. It's been a while. This thing creates a big old wake. I am spooking fish. You'd have thought this thing was a Mastercraft surf boat. Something else. She's got power. I will tell you that. You could pretty much pull a tube behind this thing. Under the boat. What the? Yo. Oh, God dang, son. Yo, the Mondo is killing them tonight. <laughs> I know. That was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I served him the Mondo buffet. All right, this is getting fun, man. We're starting to get on them. Only a matter of time till we get that big one. Green pumpkin has been killing it. If you guys are interested in any of the baits I've been throwing, line, hammer hook, it is in the description for you guys. Save up to 30% with Carl's Bait and Tackle. You guys can check that out at shopcarls.com. Man, that's where Devin and I get about 90% of everything we throw on a day-to-day -day basis. For now, I'm gonna try and get another fish before daylight fades. Yep. Oh, bluegill. Wow. Stolen. The gill are fierce in here, guys. Well, I'm gonna take a few more casts, y'all, and then probably start to load up. Let me steer us in here. We're looking pretty good. Bring the rudder up, rudders up. Now let's get this quickly. Boom. And we're just drifting. Wow. What a performance, Weston. 10 out of 10. Stellar landing. Hats off to you, old town. Look at this beast. I think this is deserving of an Instagram photo, y'all. If you guys haven't followed, please do so and help us hit 80,000. We are so stoked to hit 100. I just wanna say thank you to all of you guys who follow us on Instagram, like some of our photos, leave some comments, and really get early access to a lot of the stuff that happens in these videos because this picture will probably go up before you see this video. Uh, no guarantees, but Instagram for sure on the stories. You're, everyone has already seen the stories I've made out here tonight on Instagram, so you get to see those, but they only last for 24 hours. So if you guys make an Instagram account just to watch a couple of my uh, clips, you'll get the behind the scenes on all these videos, so. All right, man, the yaks have landed. We are back and heading out. Took off the hat, we're cooling off and we're loading up. I wanna thank you guys for watching this entire video. I always appreciate you guys who stick around till the end. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you're not already. We had a ton of fun on this one, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. <laughs>